Hey, what's going on my home buyers and my first time home buyers out there i know this is a crazy hot seller's market and ain't just the weather speaking inventory is stupid low buyers are out in a frenzy multiple offers are the norm and now that open houses are back let me tell you when i had mine at 600 people plus through two days of open houses it is absolutely nuts and then you add on the all cash buyers that just seem to show up out of nowhere with suitcases of cash well let me tell you something right now i got five steps for you to follow as a buyer who has a loan in order to beat out those all cash buyers yeah let me tell you friends i got five steps and you can't just follow one two and three and hope to make sure it works you got to follow all five steps we're about to get into them right now in this video so stay dialed in i'm gonna drop it on you and you're gonna find yourself as a homeowner in 2021. What's up guys, it's Eric Haas with EXP Realty here on the west side of Los Angeles, California, and I'm about to bring the five steps you need to be taking, yeah, five, in order for you as a buyer to buy a home in this market or any market and beat out any buyer, even those all cash buyers. So before we jump into it, if you're new to the channel, super stoked to have you here because I'm here to drop tips, tricks, and strategies for not only buyers, but also sellers and investors to find success in this market or any market for that matter. So if you could drop some love with a subscribe, a like, leave a comment, I'm always down to answer questions and actually address them in videos as well. But we're about to jump into the five steps you need to be taken to be a successful buyer and beat out these cash buyers all day long. So subscribe, like, comment. We're about to get into it right now. All right, guys, now before we jump into this, you're definitely going to want to get your pen and paper out or you're going to want to hit rewind quite a bit in this video because these are some gems, some genius ideas, five steps that you've got to implement all five. This is not like go find the seller and like all their Instagram photos and leave comments and say how much you love their home or promise that you're going to mow their lawn until escrow closes. These are five steps that are going to get very real with you to see if you're a serious home buyer and willing to do what it takes to buy a home in 2021's hot seller's market. So without further ado, we're going to start off kind of easy. Step one is all about getting pre-approved. Everyone does that, especially if you don't have all cash to buy a house, but getting pre-approved starts that conversation and relationship with your lender. They can have the whole financial situation apparent and right in front of them. So your pre-approval is not only giving confidence to the seller that you can buy their home, but it's also giving confidence to the lender that they maybe can pull some tricks out and make you even a more standout candidate as the buyer. And also you wanna make sure that that pre-approval letter is included with your offer. So that offer that's strong and probably over the asking price substantially looks just as strong with a strong pre-approval letter behind it. That's the first step. Now, step two is going to get a little bit more interesting and a little bit more creative. This involves what's called a contingency plan. You're probably like, contingency plan. Okay, I've heard of what contingencies are, but what is this plan that Eric's talking about? Well, there's three major contingencies in the purchase agreement when you're offering on a house to a seller and those are the appraisal the loan and the inspection now all cash buyer they're not really going to have to worry about an appraisal all cash they don't have a lender who's taking a risk on them for money so they don't have to worry about that plus they're not going to have a loan so how do you combat that well having a contingency plan in place allows you to do so and by doing so you take out the appraisal contingency understanding as a buyer by doing so that if in fact the house doesn't appraise that you would definitely be covering the spread between what you offered and what the home actually appraised for and you will be responsible for any you know a costs that are involved with the lender to get you a program based on the new price and the fact that you've had to come out of pocket to cover the spread between the appraisal and the price. So that's first and foremost that you need to understand, but taking that appraisal out means that you are 100% committed to this house. There's nothing that's going to change your mind. You've got money to cover the spread. You're showing that in your proof of funds. You're ready to go. Now, the next step is, can you take the inspection contingency out? Absolutely, and you can still do your inspection. You just gotta understand that it's no longer something that you can get out of the contract for. And you usually want to make that stipulation very clear with the understanding to the seller that you're not gonna be asking for any requests for repairs or credits. Now, I just had to endure this with my brother-in-law. We took out the appraisal. Fortunately, it appraised, did not have to cover a spread, which was great. Did an inspection, there was quite a bit of money on the table, but still we understood that it's a hot seller's market. We had to eat it and we did so. And guess what? We got a house after learning the hard way after 30 offers. So this is definitely a tried and true five-step process that definitely works. Now, 
we're looking at loan contingency now, right? So you've got 21 days in order for your lender to make sure that your loan is approved to underwriting and you're getting loan docs to escrow in a 21 day period. Now, based on having that pre-approval early on, you're setting up that relationship and conversation early on. That's allowing for them to understand your financial situation and they can find tricks and strategies and ways to cut down the loan contingency period from 21 to 14 to maybe 10 or just saying, hey, guess what, Eric, you don't have to worry about this loan contingency. We got you covered. We're going to close no matter what. If you can have that conversation, loan contingency, take it out. Now you're an all-cash buyer just like that all-cash buyer who's probably bid on a bunch of things too, thinking just because they're all-cash, they can offer fifty dollars to $100,000 less. Yes, my friends, that's what's happening a lot of times. So don't be scared of that all-cash buyer because they think that their money is more valuable. They think that they can offer less, but that's not the case. And you will triumphant in the long run. Trust me. All right, guys, so step one and two have been a little bit mild and getting you into the flow of what's going to be expected of you if you want to be a serious, successful home buyer in 2021's hot sellers market. We're going to jump into step three right now. And remember, you got to do make sure that you're doing step one, two, three, four, and five at the end of the day if you truly want to be a successful home buyer in 2021. So step number three is considering paying those closing costs for the seller. It is important for you to stand out, especially amongst these home buyers that have all cash. They're going to show up at every single opportunity that you're going to be looking at. It's usually not going to get lucky that they're not going to be there. In fact, when I was showing property with my brother-in-law, they were showing up at almost every single one and you could recognize them to the point where we knew who they were when they were showing up. So it's going to happen. And this, my friends, paying the seller's closing costs, letting them know that they're going to, you're willing to do that and you've got the funds to cover it is definitely something that's going to have you standing out like a shining star and probably be one of the best opportunities for the sellers to be considering. A lot of times these all cash buyers think that their money is worth more because they're all cash. So they think that they can offer a lesser amount. Well, let me tell you, you're going to be in the driver's seat because we're going all out, all in. Step three, paying all the sellers closing costs, not having an issue with it because you're going to be a homeowner. You're focused on the bigger goal at the end of the day of being that homeowner. And if you got to put out a little bit more in the long run, real estate is the best investment. Warren Buffett will attest to that. It's just about getting in, get in, and everything's fine and dandy. Let's jump to number four, step four. Again, you've got to follow all of these steps to be a success as a home buyer in 2021 seller's market. But step number four is implementing a seller's escalation clause. Yes, my friends, the seller's escalation clause is extremely and critically important to your offer, especially if you feel like there's going to be a five to $10,000, $20,000 discrepancy between the highest offer and your offer. So it's better to get ahead of the game and put in an escalation clause where you find yourself paying five, 10, 15, $20,000 more than the highest price that is received by the seller. So in fact, if you were say, for example, the highest offer that came in was 820 and your escalation clause said that you would go $10,000 higher than that you'd be at 8 30 at the end of the day comfortably knowing that you were going to cover that and had the funds to do so and if you're in that kind of position this again is going to have you setting yourself apart from the rest of the buyers out there because they're not even aware of these kinds of strategies they're just thinking hey i'll take the appraisal out and i should be good to go or i'll be all cash and offer $150,000 less, I'll be good to go. No, if you implement these strategies, we will beat out the competition time and time again. Now, the fifth one is crucially important because inventory is definitely not something that's picking up right now, and they're not making more land, especially here in Los Angeles, whether you're in the Valley, the Inland Empire, on the east side of LA, or on the west side of LA. Land is just not available they're not making any more of it so it's extremely available especially here in los angeles so number five is going all in not only just looking on the mls realtor.com zillow to see what the latest greatest new property that hit the market like everyone else is or making sure you're staying on top of those homes that have had price reductions but hey it's letting me know from day one what neighborhood you're looking at what streets you're looking at and what are the must must haves in the home and we get right into shopping for homes off market because then there's no competition and unlike any other time that it's been a hot seller's market we have never had a pandemic impacting the way people are selling their homes yes open houses are happening but not for everyone not everybody wants hundreds and thousands of people coming through their open house unless it's vacant but most people who are living there still are a little bit hesitant about having a bunch of people through through an open house so if we can get to them because they're out there if we can get to them off market write them up an offer make it happen off market without any competition 
telling you, it's going to be a lot smoother. But hey, if you've got these five steps, you've got everything covered. You've got your pre-approval dialed in, ready to go. You've got your contingency plan ready to happen. You've got your paying the cost of the closing costs understood. You kind of idea of where that's going to be price point wise so you can implement that as well to stand out as one of the top buyers and the top buyer amongst any type of buyer you face. Plus, you've got the offer and price escalation clause and you're looking not only at what's on market, but you're looking at what's off market. Let me tell you, that, my friends, is a recipe for success. Not pitching a tent in front of the house that you absolutely love and hope and pray they don't call the cops on you before they accept your offer. But this, my friend, these five steps right here, right now, these are the ones you should be writing down because this will find ultimate success for you as a home buyer in 2021 seller's market and any market that you ever encounter again. If you need help and you're here on the west side of Los Angeles or in the valley or on the east side or LA for that matter, I got you covered. And don't hesitate to reach out if you're not in LA. I got plenty of agent friends all over the country that I'm more than happy to hook you up with that offer the same kind of mentality and helpful strategies to make a successful transaction happen for you as well. So have a great weekend. Hopefully you guys are doing great. I just got back from Hawaii. It's important to take a vacation from time to time, but I'm back in the saddle and I'm here looking out for you. So have a great weekend. I'll see you next time.